In the name of Jesus, thy wish shall be Hello, hello, ladies and gentlemen. Hello. Ah, as a Christian priest reflecting on the theoretical propositions about a minimum wage, it is clear that this is not just an economic matter, but also a moral and ethical one. A lot of people may ask the question, is a minimum wage ethical? But let's try to find out. The discussion revolves around various philosophical and economic perspectives. But at its core, it is about justice and fairness. But throughout history, many ethical principles and religious teachings have emphasized the importance of fair wages and just compensation for labor, from Aristotle's idea of equitable earning to the Catholic Church's teachings through Thomas Aquinas, who has been the long-standing recognition of the moral imperative of fair wages. In contemporary discussions, philosophers like Immanuel Kant and John Rawls have contributed to the debate. Kant's categorical imperative underscores the importance of individual rights, duties, and justice. Rawls, on the other hand, focuses on the quality of wages. In a just society, considering factors like supply, demand, and the well-being of future generations, which is an important issue, and I'm going to touch upon this issue once again in just a while. You can Economists have their theories as well, with some arguing that minimum wage can lead to job loss. Important. It is important to notice, which is why we're discussing how ethical the minimum wage is. Bohalos represent evidence that it may not have a significant negative impact on employment. The debate continues, but it is crucial to remember that behind these theories and economic models are real people, many of whom are struggling to make ends meet on minimum wage. From a Christian perspective, the moral imperative to care for the poor and vulnerable is clear. The Bible teaches us to love our neighbors as ourselves and to ensure that workers are treated justly. Minimum wage policies can be seen as a way to put these principles into practice as they seek to provide a basic standard of living for those at the lower end of the income spectrum. While the economic debates around minimum wage are important, they should not overshadow the ethical imperative to ensure that all workers receive a fair and just wage. As a Christian priest, I believe that it is our responsibility to advocate for policies that promote economic justice and uphold the dignity of all individuals, especially those who are most vulnerable in society. But I do not necessarily agree with the concept of minimum wage. And here is why. Ladies and gentlemen, let's talk about a harsh reality that many Americans face day in and day out. The relentless struggle of living paycheck to paycheck. It is a predicament that doesn't discriminate, affecting countless individuals across the nation. As of June, a staggering 61% of adults in the United States find themselves trapped in this financial predicament. According to a Saul sobering reported by Lending Club, what this means is that they are essentially walking a tight rope, meaning people are walking, walking a tight rope, relying on those regular paychecks to cover their basic living expenses, often left with little to nothing to spare. Now take a moment 
to let that sink in. Over 7 in 10 Americans, a staggering 72% don't feel financially secure with their current standing. And a grim quarter of them believe they may never attain financial security, ever, as revealed by a survey conducted by Bank Rate. This isn't a new problem, mind you. As far back as 2010, Principal Financial Group found that a substantial 75% of workers were already deeply concerned about their financial futures. What's even more disheartening is that wage growth for the bottom 90% of earners since 1979 has been meager, a mere 15 percent in stark contrast to the 138 percent increase enjoyed by the top one percent as reported by the economic policy institute in 2015. all prices went up everything went up except salaries but why is this issue back in the spotlight now? It's because the anxiety of wage earners has intensified, fueled by the relentless rise in inflation and in interest rates. Let's break down the numbers. According to the latest data from the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics, the typical American worker brings home around $3,308 each month after taxes and benefits. Sounds about right. Yeah, sounds decent. Yeah? But here is the catch. When you consider the costs of today's essential expenses, it quickly becomes apparent why like so many are feeling the financial pinch. Okay. For instance, as of June, the median monthly rent in the United States sat at a staggering $2,029 according to Redfin. That's approximately 61% of the median take-home pay right there and if you are a homeowner it's not much better during the first quarter of 2023 the council of for community and economic research reported that the median mortgage payment for a 2000 2400 square foot house was one thousand nine hundred fifty seven dollars per month that's a half to 59 percent of the median take home pay for homeowners but the story doesn't end there. Inflation is cracking havoc, particularly on housing stability. It's a cascading effect that certified financial planner Camille Elliott, the co-founder and CEO of Collective Wealth Partners in Atlanta, explains well. She points out that when you have uncertainty in your housing situation, it trickles into all other aspects of your life, creating a domino effect of instability. Now, let's factor in the cost of nourishment and out-of-pocket health expenses. On coverage, Americans are shelling out $690.75 each month for food, not to mention the $96.42 monthly spent on health ex um, ex expenditures. Church Church is the only thing that's left in souls of people. Crunch the numbers, then you will, and you are left with the total monthly expense of $2,816 for renters and $2,744 for homeowners. About the same. What's the takeaway here? Well, that already consumes just over 85% of the median take-home pay for the average American renter and nearly 83% for the typical home order. And that's without even considering other vital expenses such as transportation, child care, and debt payments. In a nutshell, managing one's financial life in America today often feels like trying to drink from a firehouse.
Many households find themselves in a constant state of reaction, struggling to piece together when that allows them to make ends meet. As Ida, Reed Major, the Vice President of Austin Institute, actually puts it, they're caught in the reactionary space, desperately trying to navigate the tumultuous waters of financial insecurity. So, when payday finally arrives for so many Americans, it's not just a relief, it's a life lifeline that keeps them afloat in an economic sea of uncertainty. It's high time we address this issue. Hand on the work toward a more financial secure, secure future for all. So what do we learn? That minimum wage does not help. It doesn't. So make it $20 per hour, make it $30 per hour. Prices are just gonna go up with the minimum wage. And so what can you do? What can you do in this situation? Es escaping the cycle of living paycheck to paycheck is a challenging but achievable goal. And here are some steps and strategies that can help individuals break free from this financial predicament. First, create a budget. Start by tracking your income and expenses. Create a detailed budget. Detailed budget that outlines where your money is going each month. This will help you identify areas where you can cut back and allocate more funds towards savings. Create emergency fund. I know it's hard. I know that establishing an emergency fund should be a top priority. Aim to save at least three to six months worth of living expenses at a separate saving account. I know it's hard, but once you've cut all those expenses, once you create a budget and you stop paying for those use those subscriptions that you pay for, you stop paying for all of the services that are optional, not mandatory, you'll be able to save up. So this fund acts as a financial safety net, helping you avoid going into debt when unexpected expenses arise. Finally, reduce your debt. High interest debt such as credit card debt can be a significant financial burden. Develop a plan to pay down your debts systematically. Consider consolidating or refinancing loans to lower interest rates if possible. Increase income. Look for opportunities to boost your income. This could involve seeking a raise at your current job, taking on a part-time job or freelancing. Freelancing. Everybody works in motors are trying to do freelancing or explore side hustles. That's the thing goes chase. Kind of necessary expenses. If you and your monthly expenses and identify areas where you can cut back. This might include dining out, loads, counseling and new subscriptions or finding more cost-effective alternatives for your needs. Financial education and that's time in improving your financial literacy. Understand how invest in retirement, how invest, how investments, retirement accounts and tax strategies work. Knowledge is powerful tool in making informed financial decisions. Set financial goals. Establish clear financial goals for the short, medium and long term. These goals can provide motivation and direction for your financial planning. Automate savings. Make savings a consistent habit by automating transfers to your savings and retirement accounts. Trading savings is a non-negotiable expense and help you build wealth over time. Seek professional advice. Speak with people who understand how money works. Avoid uh, lifestyle inflation. As your income increases, arouse the temptation to inflate your lifestyle proportionally. Instead, direct the extra income towards savings and investors. Do not make the same mistakes even when you get money. Don't spend the money. Build multiple income streams. Diversify your sources of income to reduce reliance on a single paycheck. I know you want to speak with your friend. I know you want to go out. But instead, focus on making 
creating multiple income streams. Dedicate time, invest time in yourself. Multiple income streams can provide stability and enhance your financial resilience. Network and skill development. Continuously improve your skills. It's important. Expand your professional network. It's important. This can lead to better job opportunities and career advances. Consider long-term investments. Explore investment opportunities that have the potential to grow your wealth over time, such as stocks, bonds, real estate, cryptocurrencies, or retirement accounts. Seek community support. Join or create a support group with like-minded individuals who are also working to improve their financial situation. Sharing experiences and tips can be motivating. We're stronger together. Stay resist. Stay persistent. Breaking free from the paycheck to paycheck cycle takes time and discipline. Stay committed to your financial goals. And don't get discouraged by yourself that there will be people discouraging you. Get rid of those people. Don't listen to what others say. Remember the financial stability and freedom are achievable goals. And don't let um, others to say something else. But all of it is achievable with patience, determination, and consistent effort. It may take time to see significant progress. But each step you take brings you closer to a more secure and comfortable financial future. I believe that the impact of the minimum wage and poverty reduction is limited because as the minimum wage increases, so do prices, ultimately negating its intended effect. Instead, a more effective approach might involve reducing regulations to support businesses, small businesses especially, implementing tax deductions and expanding government programs to address poverty comprehensively. However, it is essential to recognize that despite external challenges, we have significant agency in shaping our own lives. The determination and discipline we can harness our circumstances to our advantage, working alongside the support of our faith and inner strength to overcome obstacles and achieve our goals. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, the order we're in unto ages of ages. Amen. In the name of Jesus, thy we shall be alone.